Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now I literally just got up and I just went on Twitter and I saw Mountain Blade Bannerlord had posted something else. Now Gamescon started today and it seems like Mountain Blade Bannerlord have released, I don't know if there's going to be one in multiple or maybe this is the only thing they're going to be releasing, but they have released Siege gameplay and this is obviously they're defending because they showed attacking before and now they're defending and we can see a lot of things in this. There was quite a few new things and a lot of things that have basically reinforced our points about old things we wanted to see. So what I'm going to do in this video, I have already watched the trailer. I was going to do an initial reaction, but I kind of scrapped that because I want you guys to support Bannerlord as much as possible. So I'm not going to show you the whole thing in its entirety because that's kind of a bit of an idiot thing to do. I was going to do that, but thinking back on it, it's not a great idea. Because I want you guys to support Tailwood as much as possible. I want you to go to their video, link in the description, and leave a comment supporting it, like it, get as many views on it as possible, share it around, because they need a lot of support on this. This is a really good job that they've been doing. So that's basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over in-depth, well, sort of in-depth analysis. It's going to be pretty, pretty in-depth analysis. I'm going to talk about what I can see, what I like about it, Without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you if you do enjoy it, go show Tailworld some love. And other than that, go watch the video, go watch the trailer, go watch the gameplay video, um, and then either do that first and then come back to my video or watch my video first and then go there. Whatever you guys want to do, it's your choice. But other than that, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Right, so let's head back to the beginning and let's go over what kind of stuff we saw. So let me just uh, turn that down a tad. So... To start off with, obviously we are we are in the battlefield again with um just you can see the graphics on the floor, just reflections from the sun and all the stuff strewn around. And basically what this is telling us is yes, you can place down a lot of your siege equipment, but there may be some stuff already there. Maybe you can use stuff as cover. Um I'm not completely sure. I think you can place these down, or they might already be there as cover. Um but that's obviously something to look out for, what the AI is going to do, because obviously they're going to have as much control in the battlefield as the player, just obviously controlled by a computer. So it's going to be interesting to see how they deploy, will it differ to what castle they're sieging or defending, and that'll be really cool to see. What you see so in uh, moving on over here, what else have we got? Ah yes, they're showing us the deployment of siege equipment again, so it's nice to see that you can have it on defending. We did see that in the initial siege gameplay where you saw the blisters on top, it then got taken out by the catapult and stuff. So that was quite cool to see, and then the blister guy got shot by an archer. So that's good to see, but it's nice to see that you do have it defending as well, and you have as many options, or at least as nearly as many options as you did in attacking, because you've got all these different points you can put it in. Maybe you can put it down here, so once they breach through the walls, you've got a little bit on the inside. And, and I don't know, maybe the attackers has to get through the walls and then into a courtyard in a kind of Total War style thing, or Mountain Blade multiplayer kind of thing. Not just kill all your men, maybe they have to capture a point, or maybe it's just you have to kill every last man. Because we did see in the initial Siege gameplay, they were going into the keep for kind of a last stand, so that might be indicating that. And we can see down the side here, We've got face enemy to position, close, widen, run, fire at wall, mount, player, and transfer. So I'm not completely sure what these guys are going to be. Is that kind of like come to the player? That kind of swap positions? I'm not completely sure. I guess we'll see later on. So moving forward, of course, we have the amazing... <laughs> Just look how nice it looks. We have so much detail here, even up here, which I doubt you can even go. Maybe you can. Th there's just so many much detail and obviously we have custom banners here are they made by the player i don't know they look we'll see later on on the shields they look kind of nice and professional so i think there's either going to be ones already set which i'm pretty sure there will be and plus the addition of custom ones or there's just going to be set ones and we have like the fire burning pits here that is just so much attention to detail in this kind of thing so if we play from here, we have the archer shooting. Your archers are on the wall. They are taking pot shots down on the enemy. The music playing in the background. And if you hear the music, that is definitely Mount and Blade music. You can really just hear that. So, coming back here, the AI is firing its artillery. What we don't know so far is how the AI works with artillery. Will it aim at certain points? Is there certain weak points that it needs to aim at? Or will it just fire randomly at the walls? I don't know. What I can see here is it's firing at, I think this is the gatehouse here, um, 
or an important structure with maybe artillery on top of it. So that might be a sign that the AI is trying to aim for something specifically. So uh, <laughs> moving forward here, you can see arrows whizzing over the head of the player. And I don't want to point it out too much, but I don't want to let things slide. If you just look here, that AI guy there is having a bit of a, a bit of a happy time over there. They still probably need to do a little bit of work on their AI not glitching out. But after all, it is Mountain Blade, and we all know that kind of stuff does happen. But that's kind of what makes Mountain Blade Mountain Blade. But we're not going to let it slide. Hopefully, Tail Worlds, you can try and fix this as much as possible. Obviously, it's not a massive thing, but it might change the immersion of the game a bit. But other than that, everything looks like it's going well so far. The only problems I've really seen is maybe like a couple of AI glitches where they're just like glitching, their bodies are moving a bit weirdly or something like that. So also what I've been thinking is what are the AI going to do as in skirmishes, archers? Will they have specific targets? Are they just going to fire anyone randomly? What we can see here is the player is purpose purposely firing at the people coming to the ladder and that AI is joining him. But is, are they going to fire at specific people, people of more threat, people of more... Maybe there's higher up ranks, maybe there's lords and stuff that AI might target. I don't know, maybe they're just going to fire at people randomly. So the player is trying to stop them from getting up the ladder here, but he doesn't quite succeed. And as I mentioned, there's a bit of an AI glitch there. And look at him falling off the ladder. Oh, that is glorious. And we have the AI here defending the ladder. They are defending the top of their fort. And <laughs> Sorry, I just, I just have to see that again. Uh <laughs> Just watch, <laughs> watch this orange guy when he dies. <laughs> that, is, that has made my day. That has made my day. Oh, I love you, Mountain Blade. I love you. And we can see guys. Oh, look at that artillery. Just slightly missed it. But what would happen if the artillery did hit the wall with a massive amount of AI or players on it? Would they go flying? Would they start burning if it was burning artillery? I don't know. That would be really cool to see. And we can see the AI moving up here. There's a bit of an archer stuck in there, but he's, he's flopped down, so it's fine. I was getting run over by his own battering ram. We have the artillery being rather inaccurate, which I guess is realistic to the time. We have siege towers. And look at the units coming up. Massive armies that the AI are controlling that are just massive units and hopefully the AI are able to control each unit separately. They're able to do different things or maybe they're just all going to charge up. We'll have to see later on with that. So moving on a little bit, what else do we have here? So obviously we have the phase of the main breaching of the wall, the siege towers coming up and the player is moving back through to, I think he's going to try and counter attack the siege tower going to try and stop as many people as possible from getting up there. That might be quite a good idea. But then he's moving back into the gatehouse where we obviously have these death holes that were shown earlier in the initial siege gameplay when they were attacking. The AI were throwing down flaming pots, rocks, anything that really they could find to throw down to try and stop the battering of the gate commencing. So obviously the player can do that as well as we see here. He's picking up a rock, he's throwing it down. And this rock did a lot more damage than I thought it was going to do. I think it was just going to bonk a guy on the head. But it looks like it kind of explodes and takes out a couple of people. So, uh, maybe these rocks are going to do a lot more damage. Now, one thing I would like to see here, but obviously it's not probably really possible at this stage in development. One thing that would have been cool is when it comes down, all these falling bits actually did something instead of kind of just merging through the AI there. But obviously that is something that is really hard to do uh, with destructible terrain. And that was a good rock throw into the backs of the enemy. So the player is moving down there. He is going to try and help stop here. Right, sorry about that. A plane just flew over my house because it thought Mountain Blade Bannerlord isn't important enough. And it's like, oh, you just fly over the house. Right, anyway, let's get back into the country. So what I was saying is the AI here, you can see them. They're just trying to merciless, mercilessly chop these guys to death. You can see them hitting each other a little bit. Which, you know, may be a bit of an issue, but other than that, I'm, I'm not too worried about what we can see so far. And obviously, you see... <laughs> you, I, I don't know, is this a girl? Is this a man or a woman? I'm not completely sure, because it sounds like a woman's scream there, breaking her legs as she falls off the wall. But also, one thing I noticed at the start of the gameplay is, down here, you have the shield. He's got, looks like he's got an axe there. Where is the axe here? Maybe that's just something that hasn't quite been implemented yet. Or maybe they're just going to have a shield here showing shield damage because you can see what weapon you have. It's just in Warband they did have the weapon as well as the shield. And as you see the blocking mechanics stop in the archers maybe. Stop some arrows coming through and hitting him. 
and he's getting his bow out. Now, one thing that I think would be really funny to see is if they carried on with the jump shooting in Warband, because that was just such an entertaining thing to do. Going to the back of your enemy, back of your allies, sorry, drawing your bow, jumping up and shooting over and trying to get lucky pot shots onto the enemy beyond. So you can see the AI trying to drastically push these guys back. And you can see the guys at the back here, obviously they're only starting to hit once they get fairly close. This guy seems to be hitting his friendly on the head. But they only start to really hit once they get to the first two ranks or so. And the guys behind them are trying to push them forward, which is quite a cool thing. Hopefully, it looks like the um, unit collision is pretty good at the moment. You don't see guys merging through each other at all really so we have blood splattering everywhere see blood is actually flying now in mountain blade warband many of you did correct me and i feel so stupid now looking back at that video i said there wasn't really much blood in warband at all when thinking about it yes there is i always get completely covered in blood or jam <laughs> in warband as you like to call it but this you can actually blood flying on warband it was kind of just it I really don't want to say something wrong, otherwise I'm going to get absolutely shreked as well. And they're turning the banners off above the heads, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can actually see blood flying here. I don't know if you noticed that a second ago. There was actually a bit of blood flying across the screen over this bit. There you go. I don't know how many of you guys saw that. But that is now a thing, which is really cool. Blood splattered flying everywhere. And there were a lot of comments on my what will they show at Gamescon. And a lot of it was gore. And uh, yeah, gore, gore is just... Just everyone loves gore. I mean, obviously, there's quite a bit of blood in here, but I think the modding community is going to have a lot of fun with this. Because even if a game adds a slight amount of blood in it, a modding community can ramp that blood up to the max. We're going to have mods with blood flying everywhere. And it will just look absolutely insane. So moving forward here, it seems like we are... Well, let's say we are. The player is actually pushing back the enemy. The enemy are actually losing. Well, they have different types of army, see? I think these are probably the more elite troops here, where you've got the uh, the mail armor and um, the plates on it. But we also have just the kind of peasants in their kind of tunics and no helmets. And, oh, it's just so... Watch that guy. Bam. That's so satisfying. Does, does no one else find that that satisfying? I just find someone getting hit by an arrow and the ragdoll physics taking over the most satisfying thing in the world. I love it so much. And um, we can see like, a burning wreckage just here. Is that dynamic or is that already placed in at the start of the game? We did see some of this stuff already in there. But was it burning? I can't actually remember. We're going to go and check back in that in a second. So it looks like they have defended the castle. Um, and there, there's blood everywhere. There's blood on shields. The bodies are there. It doesn't seem like bodies really disappear. Maybe they probably do at some point if it's a massive, massive battle. Because obviously the engine might not be able to handle it. But at the moment, it doesn't look like bodies really disappear. And what we can see here... It's kind of a score table that you can normally see in multiplayer games. And in Warband you saw it in multiplayer. But this is a new thing to single player that they're adding in. We did see a slight bit of it at the um, at the end of one of the extended last gameplays. Um, and as you can see here, it tells you your army, how many kills they got, how many of them run away, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not quite sure what that one be. Is that maybe... I don't know. I really have no idea. I guess that's death. That's something to do with defensiveness. Um, that's how many people were treated, I presume. That's kills, probably. But I, I honestly don't know about this stuff. So if any of you have any predictions of what this kind of stuff means, if any of you actually know what it means, that'll be really cool to see. So obviously we do have a play and fast forward and a skip button here. Or a retreat button, which is actually really interesting to see. So you can pause battles in game. I mean, you could do that in Mountain Blade Warband, but you have to enable cheats and you have to go in the editor mode and stuff like that. But that'll be really cool if you can do that actually in game. So you can see how the battle's going. You can maybe evaluate the situation if you want to. Or you can just go full out crashing and burning. So let's just quickly go back to the beginning of the gameplay. Because I I, I want to see... Is this stuff burning? It doesn't look like it is burning at the moment. So maybe that is a dynamic change that they have in the middle of battles. Um, can, we, can we see it anywhere else? I don't know. We might be able to get a glimpse. It doesn't look like that stuff is burning, and that was burning at the end. So that was quite a cool thing that they've added with maybe they have dynamic things. If you fire your flaming ballistas down, it will set and catch fire to other things, which will be a really cool thing. And I just want to watch this again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For the end of the video, we've got to watch this again. Watch the guy in orange. Here we go. Here he comes. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I, I, I need to be more professional in this kind of stuff. Anyway, sorry, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. 
I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. I'm so excited for this game. If you guys are excited, remember to leave a like on the video. Dislike it if you didn't. But I hope you guys are really excited for this game. What do you like about this trailer? What do you think they've shown that's different? Just leave a comment down below and I'd really like to see your suggestions. But apart from that, remember to subscribe to the channel for more Mountain Blade content. I'll be doing content on Bannerlord and, of course, carrying on with Warband because everyone loves Warband. But until then, I will see you in the next one.